The text is right now is Exodus chapter 3. I'm going to look at chapter 4. Uh, we read this in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. The Lord said, I've seen the misery of the people in Egypt. I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and bring them out of the land, a land of flowing with milk and honey. And we see from this text that God was well aware of the situation with the children of Israel. And then we read down to verse 11, But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Now here God knows the situation. He's ready for a great thing for Moses to do. And what's the first thing Moses does? Does He right away brings excuses. This is not the Charlton Heston that we see in the movie. This man's really afraid. Now God responds to verse 11 and verse 12. And, um, and God said to him, I will, bring with, I, will, I will be with you and this will be a sign to you that I, that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on the mountain. Now, we go to verse 4. Again, we see excuses. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? See, right away, he takes a negative aspect of this. God has called him. Verse 12 says, I'll certainly be with you. But right away, he comes right here and makes excuses. Then the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? A staff, Moses replied. The Lord said, I will throw it, throw it on the ground, and um, it will become a snake. And, and he ran from it. See, he's even scared about that. Then the Lord said, reach out your hand and uh, take it uh, by the tail. And Moses reached out and took it by the hand, and it turned the staff back, in the, the, the stick back into a staff. The staff, into a staff. And uh, again, this is something God gave him. The staff should be a reminder that God is with him all the time. And then in verse 10, Moses says to the Lord, uh, pardon your servant, Lord. Get ready for excuses again. I've never been elegant, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. So right away he comes back and says, I don't know what I'm going to say here. Then, of course, the Lord's going to respond to this. This guy's hard to convince. The Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouth? Who make the deaf or the mute? Who gives them their sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Then the next verse says, verse 12, Now go and I will help you speak. And we'll teach you what to say. God was going to tell Moses, I'm going to, I got a plan. I got it all worked out. I'm going to deliver you from the hand of the Egyptians. Now, if God calls you to do something, and he said back in the seventh verse, I've seen what's going on. And he said, I'm going to promise you something. I'm going to re take you from the Egyptians, and I'm going to give you a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites. But it's going to be your place to live. But again, Moses makes excuses. And then he says here, you know, I'm gonna, I'll teach you what to say. But Moses said, uh, pardon your servant, Lord. Uh, please send someone else. Can you believe this guy? He wants to now have someone do it. Not the Charlton Heston of the movie. But Moses said, and again, he makes excuses. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses and said, what about your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know that he speaks well. He's already on his way to meet you. And he will be glad uh, to see you. You shall speak to him and put words. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak, and will teach you what to say. Don't worry about it. It's going to all take all being taken care of. But right away, and notice he said that Aaron's on the way. God knows exactly what's going on here. So he says, now take the staff in your hand, and you can perform many many wondrous signs. It's interesting, and we've all gone through this, we feel that God has something he wants us to do, but we begin to worry. Right now with this coronavirus, people are really uptight about this thing. Uh, in all my almost 72 years, I have never encountered something where people are so afraid of something. And it is a serious situation. I've canceled church for a lot of over the years for snowstorms and stuff, but never for this. We are really being put through a test. But you know, in a way... If you look at this situation with Israel and the hands of the Egyptians, it looked like a pretty hopeless situation. But notice, God knew it was going on, and he made a promise. And as Christians, you know what? As a church, God's going to be with us every step of the way. We need to assert the positive, because God will be with us. And the promise of verse 12, and he said, I will be with you, and this will be a sign to you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt... I will and worship God on this mountain. 
God is going to be with us every step of the way. It's kind of awkward. I've never done a sermon in a room like this before, and you can see all my stuff in the background. Hollywood would never approve of this setting. But I wanted to make this message for you, and we're going to make sure you get it. And uh, again, we need to pray, because you know what? Just as God used Moses, unlike the Charlton Heston character who, you know, was brave and mighty and all that kind of stuff, Moses was just a regular guy. And he didn't really have the ability to do things. But when we have God on our side, he'll be with us every step of the way. So don't panic. God is with us, and we're going to get through this. We may have a few things that are going to set us back. We're going to have to readjust our lifestyle. But remember this, the Lord hasn't changed. Scripture tells us Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. And so I want to just close again by focusing in on that 12th verse. I will be with you. The King James says in the text, certainly I will be with you. I kind of like that certainly word a little bit better. But either way, we are never alone because God promises to be with us every step of the way. So again, um, I'm going to close with a word of prayer. And again, let's remember this, that the God who delivered the Egyptians is the same God that will deliver us. Lord, we just come to you now in prayer. And these are very trying times that we go through. But I just pray you'll help us every step of the way. And to know that whatever happens, it's all under your control. As you equipped Moses, you will equip us. God isn't looking for the most talented people. He's looking for faithful people that will put their faith and trust in him. So may we as a church and as a group of people put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, for God will truly work this out. And again, God bless you, and I look forward to doing sermons in the pulpit rather than in this office of my house. Live from 26 Colonial Drive.